Hey everyone, we want you to know your NASCAR, and today we're here at the number 62 South Point Holler for NASCAR Xfinity Series driver Brendan Gaughan, and we've convinced Brendan to give us a tour of his race team hauler. Let's go. Come on. I'm home. Um, the guys, we travel 36, 38 weeks a year, and the guys, we live together and we travel together and we start out of course with the most important part if you look at the South Point Casino team which is we call ourselves Team Beefcake we actually stepped on a scale this week we are a ton of fun um, <laughs> but so you start with the kitchen so in the back what will happen all day long you see we got snacks we'll have our, our food laid out all day long we don't get like a standard lunch break you know the guys we work all day and when the food gets delivered they get to come through and get it when they can so the truck driver always leaves stuff out we got of course the lifeblood of any yes you know, person nowadays coffee yeah exactly so you got your coffee you got your snacks you got your stuff that and all day long the truck driver will keep this updated with different food for us so the guys can just basically whenever they need it grab it and keep going when they have a downtime um, you keep moving through the back now this is awesome by the way everything in here that we're going to need on a race weekend all our radios Every guy has their job. Now this is the deal you always hear truck drivers. Everybody says they want to drive truck in NASCAR. A truck driver in NASCAR is way more than just driving the truck. It's kindergarten cop. So every guy <laughs> is supposed to be responsible for charging the radio. And guys always forget. And when guys forget, they blame the truck driver when the radio dies. So the truck driver has to go through and make sure that everybody didn't mess up, puts their stuff in the cradle the right way. So he's like the team wife. He, he's the guy that does the cooking on some teams. He's the guy that does the cleaning. He's the guy that has to get the stuff here. And if something's forgotten, it's his fault. It's not, but it becomes his fault. Yeah. <laughs> so the truck driver is like the thankless job, and, and we happen to have one of the best. Matter of fact, speak of the devil, we happen to have one of the best truck drivers in the business. If you turn around, that is the man, the myth, the legend, Thanks. Mr. Jerry Tuttle. I love me some Tuttle. That is your pit ball coming back. You end up where you can basically rebuild an entire race car on the fly. Woo! So everything that we're going to have on a race weekend will be inside here, will be locked away. You have your ball joints, you have your calipers, your rotors, your hats. And each week, different ones will be put in because different racetracks require different type. So this is one of the jobs the truck driver has. He has to make sure he has the right cart for any race weekend. He has the right pieces and parts on board for every race weekend because next week we go to Phoenix. It'll be a completely different front end style. So when we swap this trailer out, he has all sorts of different components that have to get put in that trailer. So what you're saying is the truck driver is the hardest working man on the, the team? Truck driver, truck driver is one of the hardest working men in the garage. They, they definitely kick some butt. Then this is our shock cabinet. Those are all the shocks that we may have a chance to go through in a weekend. Most teams have a good shock guy. I got a guy that's just, oh, I mean, I've got one of the best shock guys in the business. <laughs> uh, hi, Mr. Beeson. Shocking. Shock, yeah, shocking, shocking, shocker. So, but shocker's job, <laughs> you're just wrong. Shocky's job is to take the shocks. What happens is the crew chief will say what he wants. We want more compression, more rebound, more nose. We have all the stuff that we're looking to do. He will build the shocks, and most of them are pre-built for this race weekend. Then we test them on our shock dyno before they hit the racetrack. So we're always going to check to make sure that what he built was correct. And this is what this piece of equipment does. He has his computer here. It gives him a computer dye, a, a graph. He shows the crew chief says, this is what we want. And we know that it's right. And they put it back on the race car. Um, as all Team Beefcake starts showing up. Hi, boys. Hey, Team Beefcake. <laughs> Tell, by the way, the he shop guy, lying. he's got to use weight. He's got to gain weight. He's the light guy on the team. We're a little upset with him. <laughs> Basically, I feel like this is like a mechanic shop on wheels. It is a mechanic shop on wheels. That is exactly what this is. So we can rebuild everything we have here. This is my my helmet cabinet. So what happens is my there's fans underneath here. After the race, these are two of mine that I, I use intermittently throughout the season at Georgetown and my uh, my military helmet. So they don't stink. So they don't stink. Little dryer sheets in them. You know, we got to make sure they still stay fresh. <laughs> and then everybody loves to talk about springs. This cabinet, I'm not going to show you long because I don't need a lot of camera work of it. But spring cabinet changes every week and it's this full and we, we have all these to go through if we want them. The goal is to not need that many if you come hopefully close to being set up correctly, you never need that many springs. And then of course Shot Guy has his complete setup of trapeze and monkey <laughs> stuff that he doesn't even really know how to do. So uh, where do I get my oil changed? <laughs> um, well we can do that or instead of just changing the oil, why don't we just change an engine? Holy engine! So, what you end up with... Ooh. We have entire engines, we have gears, transmissions, we have everything that you might need on a race weekend are inside this racetrack. 
So if we need a spare engine, which if you need a spare engine, it's a bad day. Let me throw this back in here. But yeah, tuck that baby in. So we have we have spare engines, you have spare transmissions, spare gears, everything. Then you walk up to the command center. This is the lounge area. What happens, you have your engineer over here, you'll have your crew chief here, you'll have all our timing and scoring on one computer. We'll be watching practice from here. This is one, an area for work and an area for, you know, at least me or, or the crew chief to get away, have our meetings, relax for a second, because the days can get pretty busy where, you know, you get a little hectic. You want at least a moment where I can get away from everybody, take a break, debrief, do what we need to do. And then if you turn around and look backwards, there's another motor along with the race car around it. That is the backup car. With any luck, the backup car does not move on a weekend. If that car moves, it means bad things have happened. So that car's job is to stay right there, look pretty, <clears throat> but it is completely ready to go. It has the setup from this weekend, it has the, a motor in it, it has everything in it. So we have three motors per team at RCR in each trailer. So this is the 62 hauler. We have my backup car, my primary car, and that spare motor. All five of our race teams have three motors in them. That's how much money it costs to run this sport. Each motor is not cheap. And each team has three motors basically, in the backup car, in the primary car, and sitting in their hauler. So we come with 15 motors. What's the average price of a motor? Uh, well, you really can't buy them. So if a team goes to lease them, you can lease them for anywhere from 60 to $80,000 a lease. Um, RCR owns theirs, of course, because they own the engine shop with ECR engines. So we own them. But the, a lease deal costs anywhere from sixty to $80,000. So we have three of those on this hauler right now and another 15 throughout the entire deal. So in other words, go to South Point Casino, put your money in so they can buy some more motors. <laughs> Who knew a race team hauler had so many bells and whistles? Well, now you do. Thanks to Brendan and the South Point, AKA Team Beefcake for the behind the scenes tour. Until next time, I'm Brittany Kaysen, wanting you to know your NASCAR.